Welcome, welcome. For today's video, we're going to talk about live action anime adaptations. They are the bane of every anime fan and a quick money making scheme for movie studios. Looking at you, Netflix. But none are as infamous as Dragon Ball Evolution, a shit stain to the Dragon Ball franchise as a whole. But did you know that it is not the first time the Z Fighters were brought to the big screen? As there is another, well technically two others, but I'm reviewing one of them that I saw as a wee child a long long time ago. <laughs> Dragon Ball The Magic Begins is an unofficial 1991 Taiwanese live-action remake of the first Dragon Ball film, The Legend of Shenlong, but it's known as The Curse of the Blood Rubies in the English version, made back in 1986. This movie is an unofficial, unlicensed adaptation of the Dragon Ball manga with various changes made to the story and characters' names. Well, that's one way to stay out of Toriyama and Toei's radar. But is it as bad as a Netflix adaptation? Well, let's find out. The film begins with a village getting ready for the next anime expo. Look, they even brought Dragon Balls for the occasion. But in all seriousness, what they are actually doing is appointing a new village chief. This Dragon Pearl is a treasure in our village. It has been with us for over 100 years now. And right now, I'm going to hand it over to our new village chief. And as I mentioned before, the filmmakers changed certain things to avoid copyright, like calling the Dragon Balls Dragon Pearls. But I'll just call them by their actual names, thank you very much. Anyways, the village gets attacked in slow motion, which should give these villagers a chance to get away, but they are in slow motion too. <laughs> Listen, no offense to the monks, but you have a better chance praying to Raiden for help. At least he would bring backup. Then we meet the villain of this movie, King Horn. And by the way, this guy is supposed to be Emperor Pilaf, but he just looks like a fish monster fucked Babe the Blue Ox and had an abortion. Anyways, he is here to steal the Dragon Balls Palpatine style. And now he has two Dragon Balls in his possession, and he searches for the other five remaining Dragon Balls, so he can make a wish to rule the universe. <laughs> My lord! So where are the other five pearls? I don't know exactly where they are, but we'll find them. Oh, and if you're wondering who these two people are, that's Mai, and that's Shu. NANI! Anyways, we meet Grandpa Gohan, and yes, his name is changed in this dubbed as Sparkle. I'm not joking. There lives a man by the name of Sparkle. And we meet our protagonist of the film, Son Goku, who is called Monkey Boy in this version. Monkey boy. Yep, I'll just stick to Goku just so I don't get cancelled in Saiyan Twitter. But back to the movie. In this version, he does get his power pull, and it's time for his favorite pastime, training. <laughs> and not gonna lie, this is still better than the CGI fight in Evolution. Especially with comedic moments like this. After that training session, Goku and Gohan take a break, and Goku goes off to feed some monkeys, which I guess is just to remind people that he is a monkey. From a certain point of view. Then, Goku beats the shit out of a crocodile. Congratulations, Goku, now you can make knockoff handbags from its skin. And then we meet Boma, as she is tracking the Dragon Balls, wearing her best Indiana Jones cosplay. However, she encounters both Mai and Shu on tanks and nearly becomes roadkill. Luckily, she meets Goku, who mistakes her jeep as a monster. Hey, you're the monster! What do you think you're doing stopping my jeep? That girl looks strange. My god, she must be a witch! Huh? Open! <laughs> Just 
Just kidding, he's alive, and without a scratch, too. Then Bulma tries to convince Goku that she is not a witch, but a ordinary girl. Of course, Goku has never seen one before, but then he spots her 5-star Dragon Ball and says that he has the 4-star Dragon Ball back at his home. Bulma tells him that she saw the bad guys from earlier heading to Goku's home to steal it and possibly kill his grandpa. But he shouldn't worry about that. By the looks of it, Gohan is handling this pretty well. Or not. Anyways, Goku arrives too late to save Grandpa Gohan, so he and Bulma team up to find the villains. But Shu fucks up Bulma's jeep, so Goku and Bulma take an Uber to their destination. Honestly, I'll give that elephant five stars. But then they encounter Jade, the village girl from earlier, as she runs away from Oolong. And yes, that is Oolong. And he looks like a cross between a pig mutant and Mr. Popo. Goku, of course, whoops his ass and Oolong pleads for his life. Please don't hit me, sir. I'm quite a master, okay? Sir, I'm very good at kissing asses, you know that. I can make you feel very special. <laughs> Ew, no thank you. And it turns out Oolong can shapeshift, and he turns into his non-problematic form. I'm the 91st descendant of the Pig Fairy, sir. Hey, Grandpa said I'm the 91st descendant of the Monkey King. Oh, so that means centuries ago, your ancestor and mine were brothers. See, they kind of mention Journey to the West here. Anyways, our characters then encounter Yamcha. Yes, that's Yamcha ripping off Clint Eastwood, and that's Bular. Because I guess they couldn't afford finding an actual cat. Anyways, Yamcha challenges Goku and changes into his best Shen Yu gear. <laughs> Just kidding, he's alive. Damn, Goku scalped Yamcha the same way Bruce Lee did to Chuck Norris. Minus the manly chest hair, of course. Anyways, Boma and Jay show up and Yamcha turns into a pussy when he sees Boma because he's afraid of girls. Westwood, can I become your friend? That girl! That girl, where? Where is she? What an asshole! Later that night, Jay tells them what happened to her village and her parents. Then Bulma mentions a legend behind the Dragon Balls, and the group decide to find the Turtle Man. Did you say Turtle Man? That's right. T-U-R-T-L-E-M-A-N? <laughs> Piggy, do you know him? No, I don't. You idiot! I thought that you knew him. We know him by a different name, Master Roshi. And it turns out both Yamcha and Maya overhear them planning to go to Kami's Island. Also, Yamcha turns out to have one of the Dragon Balls in his possession, and he jet skis there. And here we see the man himself, Master Roshi. <laughs> And I gotta say, the actor here playing Roshi does a pretty good job as him. Just look at him. The characterization's on point, and he's the highlight of this movie. And look here, he summons the flying Nimbus. Now I order you, go to the four corners of the world and find me pretty girls. Go! <laughs> Anyways, Yamcha arrives to get his ass whooped by Roshi, but then Yamcha tricks Roshi by saying that someone wants to challenge him. However, it backfires when Roshi sees Bulma for the first time. You're beautiful. Ooh. Curves in the right places. What? 
Oh, my whole body is aching. All right, chill out, Roshi, or Twitter will smoke your ass. Bomo tells Roshi that they arrived to ask him for help and that Yamcha lied to him. So, Roshi tests both Goku and Yamcha with the flying Nimbus to see who's lying, because only someone with a pure heart can write it. Unsurprisingly, Yamcha fails and Goku wins. <laughs> And Roshi straight up gives him the cloud. Then the group asks Roshi for help and for his Dragon Ball. However, Roshi wants something in return. How about this? I'll give you a discount. Half only. Only the top. So how's that? What do you say? What? What the fuck? Fortunately, Bomo convinces Oolong to shapeshift as her to dance around with Roshi with a few enhanced features. Darling. Oh, look at the tits on that one. <laughs> I love them fucking. And they just dance around. And I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty funny seeing them dance around. And Oolong then shows Roshi the goods. <laughs> just watching and guess what i have good news and bad news the good news is they get roshi's dragon ball and help the bad news the villains arrive and start bombing the fuck out of kami's island luckily goku and the others escape on the flying nimbus while roshi stays behind to fight him off and i gotta admit he does last a pretty good while i've got the dragon pearls good <laughs> I spoke too soon. Just kidding, he survives, of course. So now the characters have to look for the final Dragon Ball, and it turns out that Oolong had one the whole time. My teacher said if I show the pearl, people will steal it. He said, I must find you guys. That's why I used Jay to meet up with you. What a twist! Now that they have the final Dragon Ball, they decide to go after Pilaf. Die! And I gotta say, this part here is giving me Tropic Thunder vibes. Here's my motherfucking boss! Yeah! And as you can tell, they defeat both Mai and Shu, and they have their final showdown with Pilaf. Oh, and it turns out that Pilaf has Grandpa Gohan, and he just throws him to our heroes. Seriously, Pilaf, you couldn't have just used him as a hostage. But then, Pilaf uses the power of Instagram filters and turns the villagers into zombies. Man, the new Walking Dead season looks like shit. Luckily, Goku gets away with his Nimbus Cloud and just hits Pilaf, which turns off the filter and knocks out the villagers. And now, time for the epic conclusion of Bootleg Dragon Ball. <laughs> Luckily, Gohan reveals that Pilaf has six Dragon Balls in his stomach, so Roshi has to force feed him the last one to have Shenron pop out of him. However, this is easier said than done. Fortunately, Gohan uses the power of AARP to help Roshi, and he blasts Pilaf and shoves the Dragon Ball in his mouth. Why, the magic power! <laughs> Good luck curing that with Pepto-Bismol. Pilaf tries to escape, but his ship explodes, and we finally see the magical dragon himself, Shenron. You are all only granted one wish, so what do you wish for? Wait a minute, that is his voice? Hold on, let me fix that. Reflect upon your desires, for I shall grant any wish, but only one. So then, Jade or Jane here wishes to restore her village and bring peace back. 
Your wish is granted. Fare you well. And so the day is saved and Jade is reunited with her parents. But there is still one thing left unsolved. I have a wish. Yes? What is it? I want to challenge you to a fight. Well, your wish is granted. <laughs> Who will win this duel, Goku or Yamcha? Find out next time on Dragon Ball. Just kidding, it's Goku. See? And that was Dragon Ball The Magic Begins. The film has received mainly negative reviews online, and I have no clue if this was a hit or not, as I can't find any information on that. For me personally, this movie is very cheaply done, and the special effects are also bad. Literally everything in this movie looks cheap as hell. But it does have very good fight scenes and great comedic moments. And out of all the characters, my favorite is Master Roshi as his characterization is accurate to the source material and is very fun to watch. So in a nutshell, this movie is so bad it's good. Dragon Ball fans will definitely get a laugh out of this. And it's over 9,000 times better than Dragon Ball Evolution. So I'm giving this movie two and a half Dragon Balls out of five. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye.